Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. So today it's time for another check-in and it's something that I haven't talked about in a little while and a couple of people have been asking about and that would be my hardware specs, pics of my computer, um, and then there's been a little bit of talk recently uh, in the last cast I did specifically about network issues and that kind of thing. So basically we're going to take this whole video just to run down what exactly is in my PC, why it's there, everything that I chose and my reasons for it, and then talking about networking stuff, which is kind of interesting. Um, a lot of you already know the general area of the United States where I live, but I just want to go over a couple of statistics about that and then basically how cable companies are really screwing everyone over. Anyway, we'll get to that. So first off, I've got some pictures I'm going to throw up on the screen here as I'm running through all this, and then uh, I'll be going over what else is in there. Uh, basically, for the actual desk setup that you can see here, I've got two 23-inch Acer 1080p monitors, which are basically your generic El Cheapo Walmart variety. I think I paid, I don't know, $110 for each of them. Um, it's more than sufficient for my needs and the two of them gives me the ability to split stuff up. You know, I can game on one screen, watch on the other, I can split up OBS, you know, all that kind of thing. So then on the keyboard, I've got all Razer stuff. I should really look into a sponsorship thing from them because I actually legitimately use their products because I like them. Um, I have used SteelSeries stuff, I have used Logitech stuff, I have used, there was another brand that I tried one time and I basically threw it out the window because it was utter crap. Uh, but basically, I've settled on a Razer Naga uh, mouse, which gives me 12 additional buttons on the side, and then a Tartarus left-hand pad, which is actually incredibly useful. Um, I can hotkey pretty much whatever I want. It swaps up the key patterns as I open and close programs. It's got the joystick for the thumb, um, space and shift on the thumb switches. And it just really condenses everything to where I'm not having to span the entire keyboard when I'm playing games. It does simplify things a lot, and they do have another one. I think it's called the Orb Weaver that has an extra row of buttons if that particular one doesn't have enough. But I really like that setup. And then I have a Razer Deathstalker Essentials keyboard, which I kind of regret. I found this one on sale for like $35 somewhere. I was like, I can't believe that there's a Deathstalker on sale for this cheap. And I picked it up immediately. And I didn't realize that the Essentials version does not have backlighting. I do like the keyboard, how it feels. Um, all the keys are tight. And I like the fact that stuff doesn't fall down inside the keyboard like it does with regular stuff. Regular keyboards. But the backlighting or lack thereof is killing me. Because the gray on black color tone was not a good choice. Like It doesn't stand out enough. If it's dim at all, you can't read what's on the keys. So that was slightly regrettable, but I do like the way it feels, and now that I'm used to it, I'm okay with it. If I do replace anything, that's probably going to be the first to go, and that will have backlighted keys. Anyway, and then generic Logitech gamepad. <clears throat> that is pretty much everything that I use. For casting specifically, I have a Samson Meteor mic. It is a USB microphone and just a generic pop filter and boom. And then a Logitech 1080p webcam, which I use for videos like this. As far as the PC itself, if you want the full build log, if you go to the Twitter link in the description of this video, a bit back in my history on Twitter, I did like a 60 post sequence with all the pictures for the complete build that I did last time. But the specs are a 4790K currently running at 4.7 because my computer gets incredibly loud when it's trying to cool. Um, I have a profile for a stable 5.0 overclock that I can game on and I have even encoded videos at 5 gigahertz. So it's perfectly stable, it's just way too noisy. <laughs> so I backed it off to 4.7 so the cooler doesn't max out to 100% every, every time I try to do something. Then I have that on an MSI um, Z97 Gaming 5 motherboard with an H110 thick radiator water cooler. And that was really an interesting discussion I had with Com on FAF about the choices on that because they have the H100i and the H110. And the H110 actually has a thicker fin set on the die on the CPU than the H100 
H1i has, or H110i, I forget which one it is. So the older edition actually has better cooling than the newer one does, but it just doesn't have the fancy backlighting. So obviously I went for the better cooling and I do not have any regrets for, about that choice because that cooler does a fantastic job. Um, the RAM is four by four, total of 16 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaw X. Um, it is Cas9, 999, 24 timing at 1600 megahertz. And then the GPU is a GTX 760 Asus Striker Rogue Edition. Um, four gigs of memory on 256 bus with one 1170 megahertz overclock. And then um, the drives, just basic stuff. Total of two terabytes, one terabyte and two 500 gig drives. And then side by side, 120 and 240 SSDs. Store all the operating system stuff and games on to get that running well. So that's a lot of specs. It's all listed there at the screen so you can see it as a whole. And there are particular reasons that I chose all of these things. Because um, if you look, the 4790K is top of the line from a generation ago. Um, and it's kind of a weird choice because everything else is not exactly top of the line. But I do encoding on the videos. FAF is an incredibly intensive program, or FA specifically. Um, so I needed the single thread speed, and I also needed a high thread count so that I could do encoding well. And this thing encodes almost... Well, it's basically two-thirds the time to encode as my old 3570K had, which is four cores, four threads. So that was a really nice upgrade on that one. Um, obviously, 16 gigs of RAM to flesh out the RAM for that more powerful processor. Usually, I'm floating around 70% usage when I'm under load. Um, and then the GTX 760. I have had a lot of people ask me why I don't want to upgrade. The reason that I don't want to upgrade is because it is completely sufficient for my needs. I don't need 183 frames per second. Um, my, I, I only have 1080p monitors, so I don't need stupid amounts of processing power in the overhead to cover you know, the, um, the higher resolutions at nowhere near 4K. And pulling Bioshock on near max settings, I still average like 75 frames per second, something like that. So it's still way over 60 frames per second in relatively taxing games. Obviously, the really new AAA titles are going to bog it down a little bit more, but it, it's still right there where I needed to be. I have no reason to upgrade that. It's working fantastically well. So basically, everything that I picked as far as the monitors, as far as the CPU, the RAM, the GPU, everything it is chosen so that my computer does not really have a bottleneck. Um, I never go 100% GPU usage and not 100% CPU usage. I never am lacking in CPU to cover how much is going on the GPU. So everything pairs nicely. I don't have any significant slowdowns in my system that aren't covered in other areas. So it's all, as a whole, a fantastic rig, and I'm 100% happy with it. I think I'm going to run with this for a long time, as long as I can take it without having a part break. So that's pretty awesome. And that wraps up the rig and just talking about why everything works like I want it to. So now to talk about the network. Um, right now, I have a 60 down, 4 up connection with Charter, Charter Communications. And just to talk a little bit about the area that I'm in, I live in the upstate of South Carolina, which is actually a pretty heavily industrialized area. The upstate area, which is basically Greenville and Anderson County, it hosts 250 international firms, including BMW, Michelin, GlaxoSmithKline from the United Kingdom, and Kyocera from Japan. I mean, there's some huge industrial complexes here with a lot of the population working at those. And then there's a lot of commerce heads and um, corporation headquarters inside Greenville itself. The area right around here, the two counties and the little um, the the suburbs outside them, everything in this area totals up to just about nine hundred thousand people as far as the population goes. And accounting for current growth, that is soon to hit a million. So, I mean, it's a fairly significant population base in a pretty heavily industrialized, mostly modern area. And 
All of that being said, <laughs> there's only two internet providers, two, AT&T and Charter Communications. AT&T provides DSL, Charter provides cable. Uh, AT&T maxes at 18.4, which at my house is 17.2 because I'm a fair ways away from the closest, um, whatever you call it, node um, distribution center. Um, so I can't get anything higher than 17.2 on a residential with AT&T. Charter maxes out at 105, which is really expensive. And I currently have the 64. That actually delivers full speed to my house. Uh, I can actually pull up a speed test right here and show you guys. Um, but to increase to 105 is less than double download and only 25% increase in upload and it's just about double the cost. And then the only thing besides that, you can either stack two connections together, which would give you um, 120 down, eight up, and you'd pay double because you're paying for two packages, but then you'd also have to pay for the hardware to get the two to work on one network in tandem. Um, or you can buy a business connection, which is 108 for $160. 160 freaking dollars right now i'm paying 60 bucks a month so it's less than half the download or less than double the download double the upload and it's paying almost three times as much for the internet connection which is just absurd but here's where it gets even weirder it only costs 125 if you bundle it with tv so if you get an additional service your cost goes down by $35 a month. I still can't figure that out unless they're getting incentivized by the cable companies because they cannot sell cable packages. So they're literally paying you to get cable in hopes that you'll watch it to feed their ad revenue. That's the only thing that I can figure out. And it doesn't help the situation when you have only two companies in the area that are not actually in direct competition with each other. So... They pretty much name their speeds and name their prices, and what do you do? So anyway, that is why yesterday I was talking about increasing funding to 140 on Patreon in order to get the business connection um, to push 1080p cast, because that would give me eight at my house between seven and eight upload, um, which would let me push 3500 bitrate for 1080p and still have overhead to pull Skype and screen share if I need to, depending on what the cast is. If we're doing another tournament, I'll have to screen share as well. And um, the actual game play. Plus, it'll take a lot of time off of my video uploads. <laughs> right now, I actually leave my PC on overnight to upload the video overnight. So anyway, that was the reasoning behind asking for the increase on Patreon. My Patreon has been sitting forever on between $65 and $70, which is amazing. It pays my internet bill and about $10 extra, dollars, which I've been using to, you know, do various and sundry things to upgrade certain stuff. And, um, you know, it, it's nice to have that so that I can justify buying the best residential connection that is within my reach. The 140 is 125 of that is going to be going directly to... A connection uh, which actually here's the patreon page since I posted that video um, it's actually gone up someone was actually two people were gracious enough to make up the difference to 140 a month which is what I asked for and I am massively thankful to those guys um, it is greatly appreciated each and every one of the guys who are supporting on patreon you guys are just awesome when I started this I never expected the response to be that good for this kind of thing and it it's just a huge huge help to everything that i'm doing but anyway that's just to show you where that extra patreon money is going um and you know anything that y'all feel like doing above and beyond that um that is completely up to y'all i'm actually redoing the goals on patreon so it'd be kind of helpful to know what you guys would like to see coming out of the channel what 
other content, additional content, different things you would like to see, then maybe I can set up as a Patreon goal. I, I'm not sure. The ones that I posted, I am fully intent on fulfilling. There's a couple of guys that have cashed in on their um, replay reviews and that kind of thing. But really, people have been happy to donate a little bit and not really asking anything in return, which is mind-blowing to me. I, not that I'm not thankful, but sometimes I don't entirely understand it. But uh, anyway, I, I'm going to reevaluate those goals just a little bit um, to change them up to reflect the additional internet service, you know, that kind of thing, just so you can see what's going on. And I just wanted to touch on this in this video just to clarify why I specifically asked for that number and how everything fits together with all this stuff. Anyway, that was a much longer and more rambly video than I thought it would be. Um, I think that pretty much touches everything that I need to mention. Obviously, if you have any questions, comments, snide remarks, hit the comments section. I would be more than happy to try to answer anything that you ask. And I guess that's it. I will see you guys in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching.